Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Now in this video we're going to be having a look at the newly released Heusingveld Ultimate Plus upgrade kit for those of us that own the Heusingveld Ultimate pedals. Now some of you may or may not know that I've been a customer of Heusingveld for a few years now. This set of pedals I've had for about three years, the Ultimates, and on the rig behind me there we have a set of Heusingveld sprint pedals. So I did film the build or the upgrade process but to be fair, the one that Heusingveld have put on their YouTube channel is far better than mine. So I'm not going to bore you with mine. I will show you the unboxing part or show you what you get in the kit. But I'm not going to show you the build. The one that Heusingveld have released is much better. I will talk about the upgrade process really quickly now, though. Um, dead straightforward. Took me about half an hour to upgrade the accelerator brake and clutch. And in that time, I give them a little bit of a clean as well because they were absolutely filthy. Uh, so I'll show you the unboxing now, then we'll jump in the rig, show you what the calibration is like, and we'll talk a little bit more about the smart control software. Okay, so firstly, let's have a look and see what's actually in the upgrade kit. So we have uh, a bit of a, an instruction booklet telling you how to do things, but there is... QR code there to a handy little video showing you how to do it. There are the new bushings. The um, These have been changed uh, quite dramatically, I think. Um, we've got one of the old ones there, and you can see the, the size difference. There is quite... A, this one's a lot bigger, but also the internal diameter is a lot smaller than that one as well, which is why you need a new rod. So that one's obviously too big there. There's a bit... Bit of player there uh, but this one should fit on there nice and snug it does perfect so you get the new bushings you get a new rod for the brake you get some new um i can't remember what they're called now but uh it's this part that sits in the pedal there the top of the pedal you get some replacement ones of those for the uh, clutch you can see that there it won't focus when you want it to yeah the clutch and the accelerator um you get a nice little toolkit there there's some allen keys spanners some washers oh, with a hole in the bag have to be careful there but yeah so there's everything that we need there to upgrade there's also another spacer there and the, probably the most important thing which is the biggest upgrade for me for the Ultimate Pedals is the new controller box. So this is the Smart Control. So now it's got the software like the Sprint Pedals had. This is the the old one there. So that's the, the, the old controller box for the Ultimates. Uh, with a clear casing on there. I always thought this looked quite nice though. I did always think this looked quite nice. Uh, but this is the new one, so it's an all-metal housing for this one. Um, but this enables you to use the software, the new software. So I'm really excited to try that. So this is the Heusingveld Smart Control software, which we can now use with the Ultimate Pedals. Now, this enables you to calibrate them, set up curves for your accelerator brake clutch, do lots and lots of wonderful things. But when you've done the upgrade, you've got to calibrate them. So we'll do that now, so it's really easy. Just click on Start Calibration. It tells you what you need to do. So you select whichever ones that you want to calibrate. We'll calibrate all three. Next step. So make sure that all pedals are in their rest position. So take your feet off the pedals. Next step. So press the throttle all the way down. Do it a couple of times. Next step. So press the brake pedal with the desired maximum force. Now you can see there the kilos of force I'm using there and I'm pressing mine actually quite hard there normally probably go up to about 80 kilos these are capable I think of 135 or 140 kilos of force but around about 80 kilos is where I want to be and then we'll do the same with the clutch all the way down do it a couple of times save calibration there we go calibration done so now all working perfectly so now this is where we can change some bits and pieces here. You can change the curve type, 
the output you can change the force in kilograms there so we can go up and down in here as well after the calibration the rubber stiffness we've got the soft ones in um, so if you look at the curve here so it's on linear at the moment we can change this curve just by changing these now what one thing probably people may do especially on iRacing when you don't really want to be going into the ABS so much is slow end and maybe adjusting this last value here so if we can go down to say if we match 92 there we can break fully and you can see the output the green bar this is kind of a cheat <laughs> what some people use on iRacing especially when driving cars like the Porsche Cup car when you don't want to be breaking as hard as you can you can set that as a, to stop so that will only break up to 92 percent pressure i don't know what the value would be in the porsche cup car to be honest to stop the wheels locking up but probably lower than that maybe mid 80s so if you set that one to 85 and this one to 85 then that's only going to break up to 85 percent no matter how hard you stamp on the pedals so everything else is is all the same up to you get to around about there 75 percent and then it starts to tail off a little bit harder to press and then it'll cap out at 85 percent but we're going to do not going to do that we'll 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 have a go with that actually in the porsche cup car soon and we'll see if it does actually make any difference but i always use linear i've never used any hacks or anything like that so my braking is always just controlled by my foot but we'll try it soon in the porsche cup car but let's take it on track and see actually what they feel like so this week, IMSA is at Road America, so we've jumped into the BMW GT because it doesn't have ABS, and it'll be interesting to see how it feels. Now, in the bottom right, you can see my pedals, and in the top left, we can see the smart control software. So those should tally up exactly the same. Also on screen, we've got the telemetry, the usual telemetry, so you should be able to see that. Now straight away what I've noticed is the accelerator is noticeably less travel on the accelerator although it feels feels buttery smooth it feels really really smooth my clutch is a bit stiffer since I've changed it but that's just because I need to adjust it uh, so the accelerator there's a little bit less travel but the actual um, raw to end that we replaced is a little bit shorter so that would explain why but it feels so much smoother than it did i remember when i first got the ultimate pedals the throttle was probably one of the things that surprised me most at how smooth it was and we're right back there now it's really smooth brake pedal different We'll, we'll, we'll just do a lap or two and we'll see actually what it feels like. Yeah, so we can get it to lock up quite easy there. Yeah, tyres are cold, so let's just have a little play with it for a lap or two. Let's just see what it's like. Oh, yeah. feels different obviously to what I'm used to because I'm used to the old rubber stack on the pedals yeah the throttle is definitely different let's try and bring it to a stop here but yeah we're locking up the pedals there. I don't know what percentage that was because I can't see it on my screen Right, let's see what it feels like driving it properly now. As if we were driving it on the old pedals. Let's have a look. Oh, tyres are still cold up. So we're wondering until we get into a heavy braking zone, actually, if it feels different. It's going to probably take a little while to get used to, as with everything.
maybe don't actually need 80 kilos of force, you know. I am pushing the pedal quite hard. But I suppose the more force you have, the harder you've got to press to lock the wheels up. So I would rather have a stiffer pedal or more force required than, than softer. Right, let's see what it's like here. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Yeah, it, it stopped easy there though, blimey. I was so... ...progressive. On the heavy braking zone there, I would just squeeze it a little bit more. Let's try it down here again. It was like here. Yeah. Really nice, really smooth. Really smooth. Gonna take some getting used to though because I've driven the other pedals for three years. And this is literally the first time I've kind of driven with these pedals in anger, so to speak. Alright, let's see. This is another heavy braking zone here now. Not enough there. Yeah. I need probably to adjust the braking force required, I think. 80 is probably too much. I don't know what I was thinking there. Although 80 doesn't seem a lot. It's actually a lot. <laughs> 80 kilos with your bad foot. Uh, it's actually quite a bit of braking force required there to, um, to get it stopped. Although I maybe did break a tad late there, actually. Right, let's try one more time. Let's just, on the top of the hill, we'll just uh, buy the brakes on, see how well it stops. So, at the uh, start line there. Yeah, that, that didn't take any stopping, did it? There is a bit too much force. I do need to dial it back a little bit. Maybe go to 75, 70 kilos. I think that's probably where I want to be, actually. But that's the beauty of the smart control software. You can do that where... You couldn't really, you would just have to soft calibrate an iRacing, you know, just kind of guess a number where you think that you want to be, whereas now I can change this on the fly. And, in fact, we might actually do that. If we can, let's have a look, see if we can change it on the fly whilst driving, whilst driving off track. Uh, right, so we'll, that was at 82 kilos, actually. But we'll save that to... There we go. Right. See if that's a little bit better. So the braking force required now shouldn't be shouldn't be as much, but we do now run the risk of braking a little bit too hard. So I'm better off setting this up now before my muscle memory starts to kick in. Perfect place to try it here now. So it's after the three. Yeah, much better, much better. So that's at 75 kilos. Yeah, definitely much better. So the extra seven kilos, just a bit too much. And I'm no lightweight, you know. <laughs> I'm no lightweight. But doing that for... Yeah, 75 kilos, I think, is where we want to be. Right, let's have a look at the curves now. And see if we can actually adjust the curves to stop the car locking up. So back to the software. So obviously we're in linear mode right now. But what we want to change is the top end of the brake curve there. We want to cap it at a certain value. Now, you used to be able to do that in iRacing, but it was just a bit of a, a guess, really, with the ultimate pedals. You could never get it exactly correct. So we're going to drop the upper number down to match the 80%. So 80% is the maximum we can brake here now. So if I stamp on the brake pedal, you can see the output there, the green bar. So on the left is actually what I'm pressing. But the green bar is all it will, will allow us to break. So let's have a look. And see what this feels like. Now I think... I don't know whether 80% the brakes would lock at 80%. Hmm, right, let's get some speed up. The tyres are cold, so... Let's just try on this downhill here, see what it feels like. 
Hmm. I think if you stamp on the pedals, it will it will lock up. Still. But if you're a bit progressive with the throttle, the brake, I don't think it'll lock. But let's stamp on it. Yeah, it still locks up. Just though, not really. So let's try and be a little bit more progressive now. That no, still locks up there. It still locks up 80. But you get the idea. You can set limits on the braking, which it won't cross. Which will probably... I mean, a lot of the, the eSports drivers will no doubt do this kind of thing to set a limit. You've still got to be a little bit more progressive with the brake. You can't just stamp on it because whatever value you set it at, if you stamp on the brake, then... It's more likely they're not going to lock up, especially if you're kind of over 70%. You'll still get lock up. Right, let's just try... Down here, just, just on here, let's have a look. Yeah, it still locks, but... Um, definitely not as much as it did when it was on 100%, so... It's a nice little feature that we've got now that this, the... Um, Sprints have always had, but we've never been able to do that with the Ultimates. So what do I think then, the upgrade kit? Well, price-wise, I think it's just shy of 100 euros for the upgrade kit. Um, and you tell me where, where else, what other company would allow you to upgrade their product for a fraction of the price, or upgrade their product to the latest specification for a fraction of the price. I can't think of anywhere else that's done that. So I tip my hat to Heusingveld for allowing us to upgrade to the latest spec pedals for 100 euros. Uh, in that 100 euros, you get essentially a whole new brake pedal feel. It feels completely different. Um, it's going to take a little bit of getting used to because obviously I'm used to the other brake rubbers, but I'll get used to that in a, in a day or so, that won't be a problem. The accelerator now is buttery smooth. I didn't realise how notchy it must have been because I hadn't maintained it as well as you should have done. But the accelerator now is buttery smooth. There is a slight reduction in the travel length, which I have noticed. Uh, I don't know if I need to adjust the pedal to compensate for the shorter rod rod end i don't think i do but i'll have a look at that but that's i mean i'm only talking a couple of millimeters difference two or three millimeters that's all but i can feel it clutch now is nice and smooth uh brake is tremendous uh heusingveld sent me this kit for free so i didn't buy it um but as a heusingveld customer and i have been for a few years i would have bought this hands down uh 100 for 100 euros to upgrade these pedals to the latest specification, definitely, definitely worth it if you're a Heusingveld Ultimate owner. Um, it just makes things a lot smoother, just freshens things up, and they feel like a brand new set of pedals. They really do. They feel absolutely incredible. I do have a set of Ultimate Plus pedals, which I'm going to try and compare them to an upgraded set to see if there is any difference. And I think... I don't think there's a massive amount of difference in the Ultimate Plus pedals apart from cosmetics um, and obviously the upgrade kit bushings and washers and all that kind of stuff. I'm sure there will be, but on the in, when I look at those pedals, I'll go through what's actually changed. But the upgrade kit, massive, massive thumbs up from me. If you haven't got one, get yourself on the waiting list. I think they're out of stock at the moment. I think everybody's bought them. And rightly so, for 100 euros, an absolute bargain right thanks for watching see you later cheers